On this channel, we talk all about extreme collectibles, and quite a few of you are either new to the game or you're just getting into the game or you want to get into the game. Don't do it! <laughs> so today, I'm going to save you some from mistakes. I'm going to go over the top 10 mistakes I made or am still making when it comes to collecting high-end crap. Hey guys, welcome to the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. I've been collecting stuff for I can't even remember how long. If you're interested in how I got into collecting, you go ahead and check out this video right here. It's how I got into collecting and it tells the entire timeline. And originally when you collect stuff that doesn't cost a lot of money, it's not a big deal. However, when you get into collecting things that cost a lot, there's a lot of dangerous missteps you can do along the way. Well, thankfully I've done them all for you. And that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to go over the top 10 mistakes I either made, almost made, or am continuing to make when talking about high-end collecting, specifically with statues, but I think a lot of this can apply to things that I don't collect and other things I do collect, like some of the autograph memorabilia. But before we get started, we're doing a giveaway. Check this out. We are going to hit 20,000 subscribers in 2020. To do that, we're giving away a statue every 2,500 subs. At 15,000 subs, the winner will get to choose between these two PCS Mortal Kombat statues. Make sure that you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Then stay tuned towards the end of this video to find out how to enter. So we're going to be pretty transparent with you guys. I'm going to let you know if these are things that I currently still make mistakes of doing, or I have in the past, or if I almost did. And number 10 is one I used to do all the time, and I just don't do it anymore. But number 10 on the biggest mistakes to avoid when collecting is POing stuff on day one. Now let me specify on something here. If you think something's going to sell out, which it rarely does, make sure you PO on day one. However, a lot of places, especially your large license companies like Prime One Studios, Sideshow, they do an addition size, which is how many they're going to make in ES of TBD or TBA, to be determined, to be announced. And this means they're gonna base the addition size based off of the initial orders. XM Studios is also doing something very similar as well. Now why is it important that you shouldn't PO on day one in a situation like that? Well, a few different things factor into it. Number one is it gives you time to actually think about the purchase. Number two is something better may come along after that. A great example of that is the XM Studios Gambit. That was announced first, then Sideshow's Gambit was announced shortly after, and both are fantastic pieces, but people definitely have a preference of one over the other. I, like many people, PO'd the XM Studios Gambit first, and for the record, I absolutely love it. And then Sideshow came out with a fantastic one as well. Another big reason that's not a good move is it just helps increase the addition size and thus makes the statue less valuable. I'm actually at the point now for pieces from Prime One Studios and Sideshow, I don't PO until they're about to ship. Oh, Mr. X, don't you miss out on stuff? Yeah, but then you save money. And I've said this in other videos before, a better statue will always come along. It may not come along tomorrow, but down the road, maybe years later, a better statue always will come along. There are some situations, whether it's custom or like Figurama or Infinity Studios, where they do sell out the first day. So I want to emphasize, you got to look at those different factors, but for the most part, do not PO license stuff on day one. And number nine big mistake is getting too involved with the social media. Now there's a bunch of caveats to this. The first one is, it's just a time sucker. I've had a lot of virtual friends who they actually have to step away. I've done that myself. I am almost in no social media other than obviously my YouTube channel and a few select other things like the Extreme Channel Facebook page. And while I'm telling you to get away from social media, check out the Extreme Channel Facebook page. The other thing about it is there's a lot of hypocrites, like people that say get away from it then check out their own page. Most of the people in the collecting world on social media are fantastic, 99% of them, but 1% uh, are just loud and annoying sometimes, and generally if you find the weakest people have the strongest voices. So another reason, just don't get too drawn into the social media aspect. The other big issue, especially when you're first starting, is if you're drawn a lot into the collecting social media, you see a lot of projects that you normally would not have seen, and thus you buy more than you should. Honestly, it's something to be true. A lot of us, especially if you're newer in this or you remember when you were newer, you would spend nights looking through social media, looking through websites like Sideshow on different things you can buy. It's just a good idea to take a step back. 
Number eight, the mistake I made is I started buying stuff without thinking about displays, not only from a space standpoint, but from a displayability standpoint. I was putting them on counters, on tables, and a lot of you can relate to this. And then I bought some shelving that didn't work. I don't know how many shelves I've gone through that are probably repacked up and in the box that just don't work for the purposes I wanted them to. Also, some of them just don't look good. That's the realism of it. I've actually done a video on like displays like what I have behind. You can actually check that out. And there's tons of different options, but honestly, you should be investing in a certain amount of money on your displays as you are in your statues. So many people, and I've been guilty of this, and sometimes I'm still guilty of this, actually end up putting things on a counter or a table or uh, even the floor. Thinking about where you're gonna display them, how you're gonna display them before you're actually purchasing the pieces or while you're purchasing them is a huge mistake that people forget to do. Number seven ties into that a little bit, but you don't forecast ahead. One of the problems with collecting, specifically with statues, is if you are POing things early, sometimes they don't arrive for one to two years. I actually just did a review of Tweeterhead Pennywise. You can see the, the coffin right there. That took over two years to get here. So where I was gonna put him two years ago is not where I can put him now. You have to forecast ahead. Not forecasting ahead is one of the big mistakes that people make. Will they even be doing that line? Scarlet Witch by XM Studios is about to ship right now. I don't collect Avengers anymore, yet I have her on order from a long time ago. So not forecasting ahead of space, of where your collection's gonna be, is a huge problem. Number six, when all this started, I actually talked to myself a lot because I'm damn entertaining, is I said to myself, Mr. X, you are getting in too deep, this is gonna hurt. That's what she said. <laughs> so often I see people who say, I started collecting six months ago and I already have 30 pieces. And again, that's the mistake I made. When I came on board I, and really started ramping up, I was buying so many pieces. Not like now where I have hashtag restraint, but it's overwhelming. And you see people ditching their purchase orders, trying to resell other pieces, always trying to get more money for it. Which this isn't a mistake that I've made, but I see it happen all the time, is if you own a statue and you need to sell it for whatever reason, whether it's space, financial issues, you just don't want it anymore, it's okay if you resell it and you don't get what you paid for it. A lot of the community has this mindset that if I'm gonna sell a statue, I can't lose money. Well, you just displayed that statue for six months or two years, it has depreciation sometimes. Now, if the market price is calling for a higher price, fine, make some profit on it. But I love when I see people put a statue up for sale, twice retail, no one buys it in two days, and they drop the price by $300, and again, and again, and again. So make sure you understand that when you sell these statues, it's okay if you lose money. Have that mindset. Number five is letting peer pressure guide your decisions. Now. I wanna be very specific on this one. I said letting peer pressure guide your decisions, not getting advice from people. Getting advice from people is, is a fabulous idea. Getting advice from people, should I buy this one or that one, is a stupid idea. It's almost always 50-50 because collectibles are pieces of art. Art is subjective. So definitely if you want to, reach out and get some advice. So for example, I recently launched this review of Timon Broly. And a lot of people are telling me the Sume one is so much better. This one isn't good. I like it. I don't care if you don't like it. You don't have to own it. So make sure that you're not letting peer pressure guide your decisions. You can get advice, you can get feedback, but if you still like it, go for it. And this is really with the preference of pieces and the selection of art. If people are warning you about companies, that may be something to listen to. But that's the number five mistake, is letting peer pressure guide your decisions. Number four mistake I've made is I didn't walk away from some shady transactions. You are the best judge on whether something's gonna go down incorrectly or not, and you kinda have this gut feeling you know. Or what they said just wasn't adding up, where I should've walked away and I didn't. Thankfully, it's only happened about three or four times. But on the flip side, there's about 10 times where it was similar feelings to that, and it ended up being okay. So that was one mistake I made, is maybe I should've just listened to it every time. But I also don't wanna be one of those buyers who bails on everything as well, because that's also kind of a shady thing to do. Number three, I'm calling, I didn't sleep on a statue. And no, that doesn't mean that I didn't take the Infinity Studios Wonder Woman bust up to my bedroom. That means that I didn't stop and actually think about it. I bought it on impulse. I'm telling you this, if you're thinking of making a big purchase and especially if it's gonna hit you financially, sleep on it. And maybe not just for a day, but maybe for a week. And you would be surprised on how much your tune changes. In my monthly segments of everything I bought, the extreme acquisitions, I now have a new part of that called hashtag restraint. 
Some of those I was positive I was gonna buy, but I took that rule and I kind of slept on it or thought about it for a few days or a week, and I ended up not buying it. However, that's not always the case. I have sold so many statues that I bought on impulse that I shouldn't have. Which also kind of ties into the number two mistake I've made, is I didn't do enough research and I didn't look at the different options. So I ended up buying an inferior product of whatever I bought, whether it was from an inferior company, it was an inferior version of that specific character, and there were other options out there that I didn't know was available. So when you're gonna buy something, especially when you talk about we're spending anywhere from 300 to 3,000 plus on a piece, look at the different options, do some research, spend some time. You may not get it all done in one day. And I think this really ties into the number three that we talked about sleeping on it as well. Spend some time before you actually make that purchase. Like for example, one time I bought the HCG Creeper, this right here, and I actually had to get a return because it was broken. But someone commented on, on the Extreme Channel Facebook page, they sold it for half the price I bought it for a few weeks before. So again, make sure you do some research. Now the number one mistake I made is I actually started statue collecting. Just kidding. Actually, that probably could be it. But the number one I actually learned from another uh, YouTuber, a fellow YouTuber, uh, from the Batman statue collector. Uh, and here's kind of his story. When he started collecting, he was doing everything. He was doing DC, Marvel, Star Wars. And not only did that become a space issue, but obviously it becomes a financial issue for anybody. So not picking the direction of your collection, not guiding it from the beginning. That is really, really important. Otherwise, you're gonna see, oh, I want a piece from Star Wars. I want a uh, X-Men uh, line. I want a Masters of the Universe line. I want a horror line. And you'll just go nuts like Mr. X has. But that's the biggest mistake I made. I should have limited myself at the beginning and say, hey, I'm only collecting X-Men and Transformers and that's it, or something of that nature. So if you're early on, now is the time to make that decision. And it makes things so much easier. You can look at a piece that you really want and it's fantastic, but it's easy to say, no, nope, that doesn't go with my collection. But if you try and set up like nine or 10 different themes, then every single piece you're like, oh yeah, that could work well for me. So I highly recommend you pick a direction that you want your collection to go into and you stick to it. That's the biggest mistake I think most collectors, including myself, have made over time. So as I said, that's a list of the top 10 mistakes I either have made, I almost made, or I continue to make and I need to get better at. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of info. I mean, let's face it, when we're making these purchases, while some of these are an investment, you're not guaranteed to get your money back. It is nice to have some equity in these pieces, but the realism of it is we don't know what the economy is going to do in the future. So you need to make smart strategic decisions when buying. And another smart decision is to comment on this video what your mistake has been, your biggest mistake. So that way other people can read through the comments and learn. And not only that, but it enters you into that giveaway. To win one of these Mortal Kombat statues, all you have to do is comment on a video. At 15,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video and pick a random comment. That person will win the prize. They can choose between these two pieces. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. But another top 10 countdown for you guys. Check out the playlist of the other top 10 countdowns we've done. Check out the subscribe button by hitting that Mr. X logo and the bell notification. Please comment below, like I said, that'll enter you into the contest. Otherwise, I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.